There is nothing quite like life experience. I mean, you know this, when you've been through something, when you've experienced it, it's a whole lot different than it is in concept than it is in experience. Well, same can be said about the Word of God. In concept, conceptually, in application, that's two different things. We can understand something, read something from the Word of God and, and comprehend it conceptually. But whenever we've been through suffering and we've seen how the Word of God has picked us up and carried us and brought us through that in application, that changes the whole way we see the Word of God. We are reading a treatise of affliction by the 17th century Puritan pastor, Thomas Case. Man, he was 57 years old when he wrote this and he had been through some stuff. He'd been put in prison several times because of his conviction for the word of God. He lost income. As a result, his family went hungry. He knew what it meant to suffer. So he, he learned some powerful lessons through that. And as a result, what he did is he wrote this for us. So here we are all these years later reading this today. So think about something. Have you ever experienced something? And then after you experienced it, it was a powerful, maybe life transforming event in your life. And you tried to articulate that to someone else and tell them what this experience was like. And you just had to say, oh, <laughs> you had to be there because you can't quite put it into words. Well, I mean, many of us have experienced that. And that's what Thomas Case is trying to help us understand. I mean, I spent a few years as a roughneck in the oil field. Before that, I ran heavy equipment. I was a heavy equipment operator. I thought I knew what hard work was until I was a roughneck in the oil field. I was in Wyoming. I thought living here in Texas, I knew what cold was until I worked in the bitter cold of Wyoming. It reframed everything for me as far as my understanding of hard work, as far as my understanding of what cold weather is. Totally reframed that. So whenever we go through affliction and we see how the word of God picks us up, carries us, gives us hope, it totally reframes everything for us. It reframes our understanding of God, his character, his closeness, his nearness, and the power of his word of God. How we need to rely on the word of God. So let's read this here today. Here's this third point. Hey, listen, the third point, and here's the thing about this. I'm noticing, you. if you've been going through this with me, you, you'll notice this too. The deeper we get into this, the richer it gets. And man, it's like Thomas Case is catching stride now, and this is some good stuff. Number three, Another quality of divine teaching is that it is based on experience. The soul can speak from experience, from personal experience, excuse me, about the truth it knows. It is good, says David, that I've been afflicted. That's Psalm 119, 71. But can't anyone say that? Oh, yes. Many people have said that idea in their heads and on their lips. But notice, the psalmist speaks from experience and gives an example of the good he gained from affliction. I have learned your statutes. He learned more about the word, took more delight in it, and became more like it than ever before. He knew it better, loved it more, and was more transformed by it. Similarly, the Lord preserves the simple. Psalm 116.6 That means God protects those who are upright in heart from harm. It's a good idea, but anyone can understand that concept. David, however, speaks from experience. I was brought low and he helped me. My faith, comfort, and resolve were low. My feet had almost slipped. Now, you, ever, you ever been there before, dear friend? Man, sometimes life can get us there really quick to where it's just like, man, we're losing hope. Um, I feel like I'm slipping. I feel like emotionally, man, I'm just fried. I just can't handle any more of this. Like life can bring us low. And what David is saying is whenever that happened, he helped me. God helped me. My faith was comfort. And when my resolve was low, my feet almost slipped. But God helped me. My faith revived my comfort, strengthened my resolve, and it steadied my feet. You hold me by my right hand. That's Psalm 73, 23. That's intimacy right there. What David's talking about is that in his, in his struggle, in his pain, he felt the power and the strength and the love and the comfort of God. And the, the God was as if a father holding a little child's right hand that's stumbling and can't hardly walk. Just picture a toddler that can barely walk. And that father comes along and that toddler is going over this rough and rocky ground and it's falling down. And the father comes along and holds that right hand and carries that toddler, helps that toddler through that. Second Timothy chapter 1. And verse 12, I have experienced his faithfulness and all sufficiency. 
I dare trust everything to him. I'm sure he will keep it safe until that day. I mean, that is good. That's why we want to live under the kingdom authority rule of Jesus. Because when we do that, then we're trusting everything to him. And we know he's going to keep all of that safe. He's not going to lose anything. He'll keep it all safe until that day. Continue reading. Those taught by God in affliction can speak from experience about the benefits and privileges of suffering. They can speak from experience about communion with God. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. That's Psalm chapter 23 and verse 4. I have experienced your comforting presence in my deepest despair. They can also speak of other fruits of affliction. This I had, Psalm 119.56. This I have gained from my sufferings. I bless God. I have learned more patience, humility, self-denial, empathy for my brother's sufferings, to hold loosely to the world, to focus on duty, trust God safely, prepare for death, and plan for eternity. One way or another, it is good for me. I could not have been without this affliction. So Thomas Case, he's saying right there, man, he goes, what a, what a powerful list he just went through right there about what affliction does. And now I would just have to say that what, what affliction and what suffering does is it reframes life and it, and it helps us to frame life in an eternal perspective and to realize what the most important aspect of life is. It's just like whenever we go, whenever we have a death of a loved one, man, that deep, deep mourning and pain, what that does is it, it brings everything down to the most important aspects of life. And that is eternal life. That is our relationship with God. That life doesn't end right here. That life goes on forever in Christ Jesus. So that's what affliction does. It reframes this. Let's read this last little, little part here today together. Common knowledge stays general and focuses more on ideas than application. But those taught by God can say, as we have heard, so we have seen. They can affirm every truth saying, it is so. I have experienced this word in my heart. They can certify that God is true. John 3 and 33. So as you look it up here at the top of the page, the problem with common knowledge, staying general and focusing more on ideals and application is this is that I'm not going to be able to stay faithful. I'm going to waver. I'm going to be tossed to and fro. Whenever afflictions hit, hard times hit, when a storm hits, and they do, they always hit, then I am going to come undone. I am I'm going to unravel in this life. So what holds us together? It is the experiences that we went through with the truth of the Word of God has binding us up and strengthening us and it, is, it gives us something, a supernatural power and work that we cannot conjure up within ourselves. It is the power, the very power and the work of God in us. So it's important, dear friend. I mean, if I look at this lesson here today, then I, I have to understand this. The value in the word of God is seen most true whenever I'm suffering afflictions in this life. So when times are good, I need to be studying. I need to be praying. I need to be strengthening my faith in God, bolstering up my spiritual life because I'm going to need it when the storms hit, when times get hard. That's when we will need it the most.